a home that we love, a city that we're proud of. As we journey to achieve this, let us take a moment to appreciate what we have around us. Join me as I meet some fellow Singaporeans who are doing what they can to help shape an even better future for Singapore. you started volunteering at Acres? Um, I was studying at NUS and I came across the Indian star tortoise being illegally kept as a pet. star tortoise? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I reported to Acres and ABA and the tortoise was actually confiscated. That's how I ended up volunteering with Acres. Now it's been 12 years as a full-time staff member. Singapore is very unique uh, because you know you can land in the, one of the world's busiest airport and in 20 minutes you can go to a wetland reserve or to a primary rainforest even. So as we green the city into a city in the garden, the wild animals are never going to be restricted to only nature reserves. We will be encountering wild animals in close proximity. For example, the case of Segar Road Monkey in November 2017. The monkey started entering uh, HTB units because there were two feeders who were feeding the monkey. Thankfully, we worked very closely with the ABA, the HTB, Wildlife Research Singapore, and also NPARCs where we could actually capture the monkey, rehabilitate her, and then release back into the wild to another site. The community plays a very important role in helping animals. The first thing is really not to feed them. Many people think that it's okay to feed wild animals and they need the food, but actually brings about a lot of harm. Being aware of um, how to coexist with wild animals, learn to appreciate them from a distance, will actually help a long way in reducing the need for wildlife rescue. This farm was started by my great-grandfather and then it's been passed down generation to generation. The biggest challenge for me was actually to change the mindset of the older generation. I realised that there was an over-reliance of a manpower within the farm. So one of the first projects that I actually embarked on right, was the packaging machine within the packing house. I actually bought it, but it wasn't until a year later before they decided to use it. Once they saw the, the efficiency and the consistency with the help of the packaging machine, right, know that technology can actually help in all these processes. And so far right now, we have six to seven packaging machines. Safer was founded last year. A group of farmers, including me, farmers from the livestock and farmers from the food fish, came together with the help of ABA. The whole idea of this federation was to have a collective voice so that we can engage the agencies and IHLs better. There's a trend that Singaporeans prefer local produce simply because they are safer due to the strict regulation. You know, they are fresher and it reduces the carbon footprint. With the help of SAFER and ABA, right, we organise SG Farmers Market around the community so that they can lay their hands on all this fresh produce easily. I've always enjoyed the outdoors and nature. So when I was uh, pursuing a course on sustainable architecture, we learned about strategies to strike a balance between buildings and nature. Why is this Paliba quarter mm. so special to you? So I actually grew up in this area, lived nearby, and I studied in this area as well. So I'm actually very proud and excited to be part of this project. When I was in Finland for a student exchange program, I realised how sweeping landscapes and nature were very much a part of the everyday lives of people living there. In Singapore, we don't have the luxury of land. I started to appreciate more of Singapore's efforts in greening the city and I wanted to be part of this movement. When I joined this project in 2015, I was involved in developing the sustainability plan for Paileba Quarter, which is a mixed-use development comprising of retail, residential and office with a large general public space. As part of the BEST Task Force, we were given the opportunity to transform our tertiary and continue education curriculum. The program particularly appealed to me as I truly believe in the value of investing and educating our future generations so that Singapore can continue to grow and succeed as a nation. Imperial pigeon. 
The white pigeon, one. Black and white bird, it's the biggest pigeon in Singapore, so oh. it must be delicious. No. <laughs> so that is your Asian koal right there. For its size, it's surprisingly good at hiding. Where are you? The Rail Corridor is significant for many, many reasons. It's a great place where nature and humans can share a space. This Rail Corridor serves as a connector. It provides a canopy, a, a shelter for many of these forest animals, not just birds, to move back and forth. Connectors serve as a, a lifeline that sustains our forests. Once you start becoming immersed in the world of birds, it's like flipping a switch that can't be switched off. It's quite magical. It opens your eyes to a side of Singapore that most people don't get to see. Which is why I you know, do the BioBlitz with MPUX. A whole bunch of people coming together, walking down a trail, and then counting any and all animals and plants that they come across. It's a great way to involve the public in educational outreach. And scientists are using this data to try to answer questions about how bird patterns are changing, populations are changing and are shifting. Every citizen can become a productive scientist in a sense. So I can be a citizen scientist if I want to. You already are, just by walking with me today. I learned so much. Right? The Friends of the Rail Corridor is a very important uh, way of sort of reaching out to the community by bringing stakeholders together. And the fact that it is a, a sort of ground up, you know, community based uh, approach. When you have residents, when you have scientists, people that use the Rail Corridor coming together, the kinds of ideas we come up with, the kinds of um, strategies can be quite surprising. And I think that's very important. It also encourages that sense of ownership in ensuring that the place uh, remains a democratic space for everyone. This Community Mall Network project is actually part of a module called Community Engagement and Participatory Design, which is a collaboration between HDB and NUS. The whole objective of this project is actually to establish the Community Mall Network as well as to revitalize the social spaces within this neighborhood so that people can actually use it more often. We are divided into three to four people within a group and we are given a site so that we can gather feedbacks and engage residents. It is a good experience because it's a bottom-up approach where we actually ask the residents what kind of design they wish to see in this neighbourhood. So one of the suggested solutions was to have a community garden because there's a lot of private gardens around here so they wish to cultivate this idea of gardening where they can grow herbs and plants together. What were some of the other feedback that the residents gave you? Okay, so some of the residents wish to see more vending machines as well as sitting areas so that they can hang out with their friends and families. Personally, I find this project very meaningful and I hope it will be useful for the residents as well as serving its purpose in bringing the community together. So mm -hmm. Professor, mm -hmm. tell me, what is the first thing that you mm -hmm. look for in a building with regard to conservation? For me, it's about conserving buildings which are meaningful to the social cultural life of people. I'm not an architect, so I will leave the architectural details to my colleagues who are architects. And for me, it's important that the building captures the spirit of the living community. The Sultan Mosque does this very well because it's not just an iconic and eye-catching building, but it stands out as a landmark for the people who worship in this place, as well as for the everyday folks that navigate this particular area in Kampung Glam. You will never miss the Golden Dome from afar. Wow, this church it looks very well conserved mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. very beautiful. Yes, yes. The Church of Saints Peter and Paul is truly beautiful. It's not just the fact that it's aesthetically pleasing, but the restoration is one that is truly a labour of love. It's a community effort. They managed to mobilise the congregation to provide all kinds of historical details, details from life that supplemented archival materials in conserving the church. Singapore is a very future-oriented place, but the more we look into the future, the more we need to treasure our past. It's the harmonising between past and present and future that gives Singapore its life. These buildings provide us anchor points in our memory, and without these memories to navigate the place, we would, in a sense, lose a little bit of ourselves.
Meeting Dave, I learned how local farming is transforming for the future. Ivy showed me how our city can be urban and sustainable at the same time. Ishira shared how residents can come together to design social spaces for their neighborhood. Anbu inspired me with her compassion for wildlife. David brought me on a rediscovery of nature in the city. And I learned from Brenda how conservation keeps our memories and heritage alive even as we look to the future. We may not have much land in Singapore, but what I found in abundance from meeting these inspiring individuals is a great desire and infectious passion to help shape Singapore into the kind of place that we would all be so proud to call home.